Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm going to show you another League game that I played. This is for the War of the Ring 2021 League, and my opponent is Kondalv. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I am playing Shadow this game, they're playing Free, and we agreed that they would get a single action token. They chose the Card Draw action token. And you can see these are both reasonable rolls. I allocated one eye, and they um, you know, got a nice mixed roll. We both got perfectly reasonable first turn rolls. So I think this is a, an interesting game to show. You'll see how it develops and we'll jump right in. So they pass, I muster Isengard. I'm always happy as Shadow to see at least two musters so I can get Saruman on turn one. And then as you should do when you have Gandalf as guide and you have a Palantir, play a card first and then move with the fellowship in case you happen to lose Gandalf. And, you know, these are both good choices, Axe and Bow and Wisdom of, El of Elrond. I like them both. My opponent chose to play Axe and Bow. Fair enough. Cycle a new character card and get I Will Go Alone. And I do like seeing these separate companion cards early on because it gives you a chance to, if you still have Gandalf as guide, cycle a new card. You're not using a character die result to separate a companion you, because otherwise that character die result can be going toward moving the fellowship. You're, you're putting a Palantir to work. And this is nice because it saves you some corruption if you get some early corruption. And it can let you get Strider down to where you need him to be to be able to get him crowned or if you need to separate a companion for some other purpose that it it's nice to have at least one of these cards early so I'm perfectly happy to see that if I were free all right so continuing on I now this is interesting I want to get Saruman for sure but I'm going to wait to see when my opponent uses this character die because if they happen to move and I happen to get a, a high tile and they happen to lose Gandalf, then I want to be, I don't want to have Saruman in play because otherwise they'll be able to get Gandalf. So you'll see how this plays out, but you should always, unless there's a real need for you to get Saruman, it's, it's usually better to wait until they don't have any wills of the West or they've used up all of their movement and then you can safely get Saruman. So I'm waiting to get Saruman and a shadow, you know, these are these are both playable. Um, actually, I can't play Hill Trolls yet because um, Sauron isn't at war yet. But, um, you know, I could play The Ring is Mine right here. My feeling is I have room in my hand. I'm going to go ahead and draw a card first, see what I get. And I decide, you know, this game, I'm going to try and focus on focus on the Fellowship. My opponent played Axe and Bow, but I think I can counter that. I have a nice, this is a nice uh, red tile early on. I bet if I put some pressure early on the fellowship, maybe it'll be worth it. So um, I go the character card route and I get more of a wound, which is wonderful to see as an early shadow card because hopefully I'll be able to get it for its full value of two. All right, my opponent moves and I manage to catch them and they get a two. And so, you know, this is, I think, a, would you lose Gandalf here? This this is a good pause the moment video. Uh, you know, th think of, pause the video moment. Uh, think about what you would do here. Would you lose Gandalf right off the bat to this too when you have a Will of the West? Or would you just take the two corruption? Would you use Axe and Bow and take one corruption? So my opponent decided to lose Gandalf. And I think that's what I would do too. I have a Will of the West showing. I have this action token so I can take the last action of the round. I'm, I'm pleased. I'm pleased enough with that. All right, so now that my opponent has lost Gandalf, I sure am glad I don't have Saruman yet. So that's that's good for me. And given that, you know, I didn't get great movement, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to probably head up north. That's a reasonable, reasonable place for me to go, um, barring any other cards that really direct me one way or another. Um, I'll probably head up north and see what happens. Okay, so... My opponent musters the elves one toward war. I'm continuing to hold off on Saruman. I go ahead and move this army to Mornon, continuing my northern uh, route. And then my opponent uses their action token. Obviously, 
in some ways it's nice to hold it for later, but in this case, by playing it now, they're forcing me to take an action and then they will get the last action of the round, which is great for them because either I'm going to get Saruman and then give them a chance to get Gandalf, or I'm not going to be able to get Saruman this round and I'm going to have to wait until next round. So this is, this is really, you know, obviously drawing a card is good, but getting the last round of the action is really good too. So I, I had proposed when we were playing that I, I thought that free people should probably get two action tokens to make the base game balanced. This is an example of just having one. So we'll see how it plays out. So they draw a card, they draw Athelos, wonderful card to get early while Strider is still guide. And we even um, have a little corruption. Oh, that's interesting. Why? Why don't we have, oh, right, sorry, sorry, I was wrong about that. Gandalf, Gandalf was worth three and the tile was a two. I had that reversed in my mind for a second. Okay, anyway, so they draw Athelos, that's perfectly great. And now I have to make a choice. Do I want to get Saruman and let them get Gandalf or do I want to wait? And and I, in this case, the choice in my mind is relatively clear. Obviously, I'd like an eighth die, but them getting a fifth die is way better than me getting an eighth die. It's better for them than for me. Um, and, and the logic is next round, they might not even roll a will of the West, in which case I will have given up one future die in exchange for costing them two or, or even more future dice if they don't actually roll wills of the West. And on top of that, I have perfectly useful things to do with this muster. I want to get the uh, Sauron to war. So I, I don't want to give them Gandalf on turn one in exchange for me getting um, one extra die. The odds of me rolling a muster next round are super high. The odds of them rolling another Will of the West is only close to 50-50. So um, definitely worth waiting. This is a clear choice for me. I muster Sauron to war. And then what else are they going to do with this um Will the West makes sense to move. Why not? Moving twice in a turn is perfectly fine. And I only have two dice. Maybe I'll hit them. I rolled two sixes and I get a three. So my opponent takes a random companion here. And, you know, that's that's an interesting choice to me, given what they have in their hand. They have Athelos in their hand right now. And so I think if I didn't have Athelos in my hand, then... Sure, the random companion makes sense. I certainly wouldn't want to lose Strider, but if I did, it was two or three. That's efficient. I'm not revealed right now. You know, sure, a little bad luck, but not that bad. But in this case, if I had gotten the one out of th one out of six and hit Strider, then Athelos becomes much worse. And on top of that, this three corruption could be healed with Athelos with Strider as guide perfectly if you happen to roll well. So for all those reasons. I, I definitely would not have risked the one out of six chance. Yes, one out of six is low. And yes, I want to, you know, whittle down the whittle down the fellowship as I'm making progress. But just the risk here, I think, was too high. So I wouldn't have done that. But it turned out fine. They got one corruption. Oh, and on top of that, they had I will go alone, too. So anyway. All right. So they, they take one corruption. They lose like a less perfectly fine result. And then they get Book of Mazarbul. Um, which is a great card to see early, bringing the the dwarves to war. And I uh, I got the Black Captain Commands because I've been drawing into the character deck. Not only am I going to get cards that can harass the Fellowship, there are also several character cards that give the Shadow extra attacks with Palantir dice. And one of the things that is a bit of a motif in this game is shadow not necessarily rolling exactly what they want and so having additional options of what to do with your palantir dice can be can be very useful so black captain commands ring wraiths are abroad and um grand hammer the underworld all of those are character cards that give you extra attacks with palantir results all right so i only have seven dice still but i allocate one eye because i have to and i roll two more and then my opponent gets a uh, not a will of the west so this is always disappointing when gandalf can come back and you don't have a will of the west then you know it, it's a shame but in this case even if he had uh sorry they had gotten a will of the west i would have waited to use my muster until the very end to get saruman so this turn 
because we only gave them one action token, they were only able to, to take the last action once in the round, unless I rolled a whole bunch of eyes. So this is, I think, one argument for a second action token. Go ahead and give the free people two action tokens so that if Shadow is going to continue to delay Saruman at the expense of preventing Gandalf, then at least they, you know, free people can do that twice, um, force that delay twice. But in this case, I'm going to get Saruman. They don't even have, you know, they don't even have... Uh, a will of the West, so it's fine. Now, one other thing. There is one card called the Mirror of Galadriel that allows the free people to change a character die result into a will of the West. So seeing that my opponent has a Palantir and has a character die result to spare, I'm still going to wait on Saruman till the end, just in case my opponent happened to roll that. I don't want to let them get a turn two Gandalf because I was a little impatient in getting Saruman. I don't need Saruman right now. There's nothing that is going to demand that. So um, my opponent starts off moving and um, I miss them. Obviously, it would have been really nice with three eyes in there into Moria to, to hit them, but I miss. All right. I continue. This army is just going to march, march right up there. Now, at this point, I don't know that they have Book of Mazarbul, but um, they have a great option here which is seeing this army march north and seeing that I'm going relatively slowly, um, they can separate a companion, presumably a hobbit, heal one corruption, move five and get all the way over to all the way over to here. And um, I don't think they can go one, two, three, four, five. So they can't get, can't quite get to Erebor. Um, if they had separated Gimli or something like that, then you could get, then you could get to Erebor. Um, Obviously, you wouldn't want to se sorry. You wouldn't want to separate Gimli because of Axe and Bow would go away. But but maybe Boromir. You could separate Boromir and go to Erebor. Get get Boromir all the way to Erebor. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six to Old Forest Road because it's three movement plus one from I will go alone plus two from Boromir's level. And then with Book of Mazarbul, you get to move your level and get to Erebor. So, um, you know, I don't know exactly how my opponent is feeling about corruption. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm probably feeling pretty good about corruption right here. So I might be tempted to take a, um, like Boromir, a captain of the West to Erebor and then really, you know, just have somebody powerful there. Um, cause I'd rather have, so anyway, you'll see they, they end up sending a hobbit and they go to to Erdwin. You could you could have kept the shadow in suspense one turn longer by going to Evendim and then playing Book of Mazarbul, because then I wouldn't know if you're going to the Shire with your fire foes or if you're going to Erdwin in um with the Book of Mazarbul. With this play, I know for sure you have Book of Mazarbul, or it, it seems very likely that you would have Book of Mazarbul. So I don't think it would have changed Shadow's actions at all, so it doesn't really matter. But um I wonder if my opponent considered sending Boromir to, to the east instead of um, who is this instead of Pippin to the West? Okay. In any case, I am now continuing my March North and my opponent plays Book of Mazarbo, which is a great early game play. They have a muster right here and they see this army marching North. It's just, it's just good news all around for them. I think they did a really great job. It's hard to defend the North and, and a play like this devoting three, well, two dice, one to separate and one to play this card. And then a whole bunch of musters is really going to do, um, wonders to, to defend the North. All right. I get, um, at this point, since there's somebody at war, I have the choice between getting the witch King or getting Saruman and I choose the witch King because either way, it's going to get me an extra die, but I choose the Witch King because then I can play the Black Captain Commands and keep this army mar marching north. What I really want to do is get this army north fast enough so that my opponent doesn't have time to really muster up Erebor too much to come and defend Woodland Realm. So I'm, I'm sort of racing a bit. Yeah, Erebor is going to be a pain in the neck to take, but at least maybe this army can take Woodland Realm and then eventually uh, pile up on Erebor. All right, so I, I get... Um, they, my opponent starts mustering an Erebor, very good play, and then I get Black Captain Commands. It gets me two Nazgul, so I'm at maximum leadership here, and march along. So I'm only three steps away. I should be able to get to Woodland Realm pretty easily. So um, I draw Breaking of the Fellowship and return to Valinor, which is a great combat effect. My opponent 
get dead men and thrandals. Oh, they must be so happy to see thrandals archers because I'm coming up north. And, you know, maybe one idea is I was already in no man land, no man lands. Maybe I should have redirected to Gondor seeing that the, that the dwarves are at war. You know, I worry a little bit about free people military victory. So I want to put some pressure up here and not just leave it completely alone. And at this point, I'm thinking I can still get to Woodland Realm pretty fast. I have eight dice to roll, and I need three attacks to get to Woodland Realm this round. So the chances of rolling at least three attacks on eight dice are, are pretty good. I don't know exactly what it is, but um, pretty good. Sorry, only seven dice, right? Only seven dice because I do, I do have to allocate an eye. Um, but I end up only rolling two attacks. So unless I happen to get another character card that lets me attack them, I'm not making it to Woodland Realm this round, which is bad for Shadow and good for free. So, and they get three musters. So normally I wouldn't be super excited to see this many musters early on, but given that I'm moving over Moria, I want to take it slowly. I'm probably only going to move once this round anyway. I'm perfectly happy as free people to see, to see these musters. I can just muster up the dwarves. So dwarves get mustered. I go ahead and get Saruman at this point. At least I get up to nine dice. My op Oh, and again, my opponent didn't roll well the West. So, so actually, that, that is disappointing, right? Last round, it didn't matter so much because I would have delayed Saruman. But this round, it really did matter. They could have gotten, they could have gotten Gandalf. So that, that was bad luck. Well, about 50-50 chance to get, to get Gandalf this round. But disappointing that they didn't. Um... Okay, so I muster in Saruman, and I miss on the hunt roll, so they've managed to get four movement, and I have to play, I want. I don't have to, but I'm going to play some cards out of my hand. I'll play one, draw one, play one, see what happens. Um, you know, at any moment they manage to get revealed, I'll be very happy to play Morgul Wound. Or Breaking of the Fellowship, right? I, I might play Breaking of the Fellowship depending on what, what happens? The fewer hobbits are in the fellowship, the more effective breaking of the fellowship is. All right. Um, so again, another muster there. And then I draw a character card, hoping to get maybe ring wraiths are abroad, obviously unlikely, but you know, got to try and thinking, okay, I have some other options. I can play hill trolls. If it turns out that, you know, I, I don't have any playable character card. All right. And then I move uh, I move two armies instead of just one army. That makes sense. And then my opponent gets some dwarves into here. They just moved two elites. I think that's probably right. I, I wonder maybe more. Um, and they think about bringing this army to, to Old Forest Road and not, um, but end up moving this army into West of Net. Now, you know, seeing that this army is trying to get to Dimrill Dale and this army is trying to get Old Forest Road and I have an army movement, I kind of like the, the Carrick play a little better, even if I don't have scouts. And I don't have scouts, but, you know, that's going to get me a muster of the north, which could be useful given that Dale actually could be a significant muster point that would be, that would be held pretty well. And the fellowship is now at four movement. And I, I kind of like the idea of declaring, or at least considering declaring into Dimrill Dale to avoid the extra tile from Moria or possibly even the Balrog. So if your plan is, you know, to wait for a while, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's right to declare the fellowship into, into Dimrill Dale to avoid um, the extra tile from Moria. So in this case, if they do declare into Dimrill Dale, then it turns on things like I can play um, Isildur's Bane and, you know, other uh, harassing cards. So I think it, it probably does make sense for them to stay. And therefore, they don't really care if I have units in Dimrill Dale because they're not, the Fellowship's not going, going there. All right. So I move and then I play Hill Trolls. All right. So that's a fairly, you know, fairly standard turn. I wish that I had had a little more movement there. The free people player has done a great job getting armies into Dale so that they'll be able to get into Woodland Realm. Now, the one thing is they did not bring a Dwarven leader, so they're going to have to either um, roll an army muster die result, which again is only 50-50 chance, or if they roll a Will of the West, they might have to choose between getting Gandalf or doing an army movement in here. So, 
that's that could be tough. I might have considered bringing that leader in as well. All right, File of Gladriel is a great card for free people. They end up discarding Wizard Staff, obviously. That's an easy one to discard. And um, I discard the King is Revealed. These are, these are pretty easy discard choices. Allocate one eye, and then I only get a single attack. So the, the number of attack dice results that I've been getting is quite low. But my opponent, exactly as we thought might happen, um, only got a single Will of the West. And so, and no army movements. So they're going to now have a choice. If they want to reinforce Woodland Realm with these dwarves that they worked so hard at mustering, they're going to have to either use the Will of the West or use a ring or not do it and not reinforce it at all. And I, th I think the choice, the main choice that I would make, it, I would love to hear people's comments. If you, if you leave any comments, I'd love to know. Would you give up Gandalf and not use a ring? And get, the, and get these army units in here, just let Woodland Realm fall, or use a ring as an army movement and save the Will of the West to get Gandalf. I think it's a tough call for me. I think I might use a ring here. I hate to do it. I usually like to save rings for, for movement, but I might actually use a ring on a character die to do an army movement and get these get these guys in. Tough call, but that's probably what I would do. In any case, they end up using Will of the West. They delay Gandalf. And a shadow, I'm very happy to see that because again, there's only a 50-50 chance that next round they're gonna roll Will of the West. So they might not even get a Will of the West next round. So they're doing a great job defending Woodland Realm, but it does, it is costing them dice. But then again, if you have more turns because you defend your strongholds well, then it's fine. That's, I mean, that's a good, it's a good use of dice. Um, so with that extra movement, they moved into Dale, these dwarves into Dale. And I don't really understand that move. Potentially, if you have help unlooked for, then maybe that makes sense. But I feel like, the North isn't at war. What what's it going to matter? Maybe you save this. You save this Northern leader. This Northern leader can retreat with you into Erebor, I guess, once Dale gets attacked. But it actually leaves Erebor a little weak. So this army, which is going to probably besiege Woodland Realm, can then move on to Erebor and potentially get it. And you might have to move these guys back. So I think this was this was a little bit of a of a wasted move. I would move this guy in from Iron Hills. I would consider moving these guys into Helm's Deep. Those are the sorts of things I would be thinking about with that move. I, I don't really understand this, particularly if you don't have help unlooked for. Okay, so I go ahead and get Woodland Realm under siege now because I'm thinking, oh, well, let's see what happens. Might as well try. Uh, I leave one behind because I have Half Orcs and Goblin Men, and I have a bunch of Palantir results. So I'm probably going to play Half Orcs and Goblin Men, and then maybe play Grand. Maybe Half Orcs and Goblin Men, draw a card, and then Grand. That's what I'm thinking right now. But my opponent has Thranduil's Archers, and so this is just a monster of a monster of a stronghold. I mean, that's just incredible defense, and you know that, that my my opponent used a will of the west for it i mean they really they really did invest a lot of time and energy into doing this and i think that's this is a great example of how to defend against an attack in the north you know get uh, either the dwarves or the north or maybe the the elves to war early get a bunch of musters and stick them into your strongholds so that was that was really well done all right they draw thrandall uh riders of theoden now they have several good uh, Rohan musters also. So this is, this is they're, they're doing a great job defending strongholds. All right. I muster the Southrons and Easterlings to war because I'm thinking, well, I'm definitely going to need their units. Maybe at some point I'm going to draw Corsairs and they'll get to take out Dole, Dole Amroth before it gets defended. All right. So I get them to war and then I play Half Orcs and Goblin Men as planned. And then my opponent moves. And again, I can hit them potentially, and I miss. So they've been, uh, you know, they move twice on turn one, but then otherwise they're just sort of creeping along one a turn. 
And I think as you're going over Moria uh, and there are a bunch of eyes in there, that, that makes a lot of sense. So I think, I think they're playing well here. Uh, I draw a card, see what it is. Okay, it's Shelob. And then they get the file into play. You know, th this is showing uh, an appropriate level of caution for the Fellowship. Yes, they could have moved again, but they're at five movement. They're at no corruption. And my military is going at a snail's pace. So um, this is exact. This is definitely, I, I think it's definitely right to, to play this here instead of trying to move again and push. So... That's a great play. And I think about going for um, going for Grand here, but I'm worried that this battle is not going to go well. And then I put the elves to war. And at this point, I'm thinking, well, all right, I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to get Woodland Realm, but maybe I could get Lorien. And so if I can muster a few units here, bring bring them over into Dimroldale and then besiege Lorien before I attack Woodland Realm again, well then at least that's that's something. Um, so that's why I don't end up playing Grand here, even though that was my original plan. I think if there had only been um, one regular and three elites, I probably would have tried it. But against one regular and four elites, it's just, I'm not going to take it it's going to take a bunch of resources. I'm going to have to reinforce this army. It's it's not worth it. And I'm eyeing Erebor, honestly, because if my opponent doesn't get a army muster, like exactly what happened this round, then um, then at least I can I can potentially get Erebor quickly. So that's my thinking. I play Shelob because it's good to play red tiles. And I'm going to have to discard one card, which I don't feel great about, but that's how it goes. So I get Denethor's Folly and Candles of Corpses. At some point, I think I'm going to reveal the Fellowship, or they're going to declare out here to avoid the extra tile from Moria. And and then these character cards are going to be very useful. More of a wound, breaking, um, Candles of Corpses, good. So I discard Denethor's Folly because I'm not really going for... I'm not really going for... Uh, Gondor, even though I could play it, I could play it here as a combat card, but I'm thinking at this point I'm moving on or wherever this army attacks. Um, but I, I just don't want to give up the corruption. My, my plan this game mostly is my army is going pretty slowly. I'm going to try and focus on corruption. So I don't want to discard any of these. And then between the combat effects of Deadly Strife or Devil of Orthanc, I definitely prefer Deadly Strife. So that's why I end up keeping that and discard Denethor's Folly. All right. Um, so I allocate one eye, and I always like a shadow when I get to roll nine dice compared to my opponent's four, but I get four more eyes. So again, my military is going slowly, and even though I've had a bunch of eyes in the pool, um, I've been missing my, my opponent because they have only been moving once a turn. And even with a bunch of eyes, you know, you just might not roll a six. So so they've been they've been reacting appropriately to, to what's been going on. All right, now they get their Wills of the West. Finally, Gandalf gets to show up, and Gandalf shows up in Woodland Realm. And I think that's totally right. It just makes that impregnable. I mean, really tough to crack. It does mean that Ents are harder to come by, but the Fellowship is still out and about. We could easily get a Hobbit in there or potentially even separate some companion in there. So, you know, I, I think that's that's a perfectly perfectly fine play. They, they do have an int, but I'm not really moving on. I'm not moving on Rohan. That's, that's the one thing, but I, I think it's nice. I think it's nice to put Gandalf there. It just, it just makes that like a guaranteed safe two victory points. All right. Um, I again rolled only two attacks on eight dice. So that is way, way below what I should be rolling, um, on average. But I'm going to continue with my plan. I'm going to see if I have time to basically move, move the muster here, move these guys over. And I have an army movement. I'm going to go to Withered Heath. I'm going to attack Erebor, and then I'm going to use Grand. So I think that's fine. And maybe, maybe if I manage to reveal the Fellowship, I'll use this uh, Palantir to play one of my nasty Fellowship hurting cards. Because I do have five dice, and they're going through Moria, so that'll be nice. All right, so they move, and I miss again. So that was three dice, three dice, five dice, and miss. It would have been nice if one of those hit, but that's the nature of the hunt. Sometimes sometimes you miss. 
Um, it is not aligning well with my strategy of having a bunch of character cards. And my opponent is also doing well to keep the Fellowship in Rivendell. I mean, if they had gotten the fellow declared to get past Moria, I would have been able to play Candles of Corpses, Isildur's Bane, quite a few of these things. So, you know, I, I, I think that often I do like to declare past it, but but it's hard to know. Um, so so I think I think that has worked out well for them so far. All right, I go ahead with my plan to get these armies in place and attack Erebor. And now my opponent did roll uh, an army movement so they can bring this this unit back into Erebor. And, and now they have Erebor full. So, <clears throat> you know, they waste a little time there. I think, yeah, I, I think it would have been better, obviously, to get these armies in there when they did. But okay, Erebor is nice and buff. But still, this uh, two regulars and three elites is not as bad as... Um, one irregular and four elites plus Gandalf. So clearly Erebor is still the easier target. And I do have Grand, and I do have Deadly Strife. So, you know, I have decent chances. All right, they go ahead and play a card. Makes sense to play Riders of Theoden. Um, you know, this is interesting. I think between those two, I probably like Aomer better because I could have put Aomer in Westamnet. And then I just have one army all together, which can, I can just move right into Helm's Deep when I need to. And I think Daylight is one of the more powerful defensive cards. It seems like they're saving maybe a little more offensive cards because Valor is you know, a little more offensive. But I like, you know, the Fellowship is moving fine. I'm, I'm making, you know, slow, but as, as the Free Peoples, I'm thinking I'm making slow but steady progress. Um, my strongholds are pretty strong. I'm just going to, I would prefer to have defensive cards rather than offensive cards. So, and between these two, I'd rather have an army, a bigger army together than a smaller, two smaller armies separate. So for all those reasons, I would very slightly have preferred playing Aomer here and then using Riders of Theoden as a combat effect. All right. So I go ahead and play Gron because what the heck else am I going to do? Um, uh, basically all of these are unplayable. So... Yeah, makes sense. I have to play ground. So on the first round of combat, I play Deadly Strife, even though they have five units and basically they're going to roll six, uh, you know, five units plus a one leader reroll. It's very significant that they don't have um, the ability to play a card, right? Because I don't want them to play something like Daylight when I play Deadly Strife. I want my full effect, right? Because on average, I'm going to get about three and three fourths hits on a deadly strife with a full leadership component um, contingent. So that's, that's fine for me, right? I have, I have more hit points than them. So I don't mind trading like that. As it turns out, I get three hits and they get one and I redraw, I redraw desperate battle. And on round two, they still have this much left with three regulars and one elite. And I have uh, four regulars and four leads. So this battle is going well for me. And I think to myself, well, maybe I don't really need to play desperate battle. Um, I think in retrospect, that was probably a mistake. I want to whittle them down. And if you're going to play it, I think it's better to play it round two than round three. But all right. In any case, I play, I don't play anything. I save it to see how things go. Maybe I'll roll well. Uh, I don't get any hits and my opponent gets three. So you know, things, things balance out over time. And again, here, if this was, if this was daylight, you know, it, they wouldn't have saved any hits. So, all right. Um, all right. Now I play desperate battle and they don't play anything and I deal two and they deal three and we end up like this and I don't press because I am worried about the elves getting to war and some military attacks, right? There are possibilities here. So I don't want to deplete myself too low. And that's the end of the round. All right, I draw Fighting Uruk High. I'm going to get to potentially play two, <laughs> two uh, sieges up there in the north. And um, I draw Foul Thing. So I'm really hoping that my opponent gets revealed at some point. I now have five character cards that all require them to be out of Rivendell. And I keep thinking they might declare themselves to avoid the extra tile from Moria. But... Um, they don't, they're staying in. So, um, I get 
a nice mixed roll here. This is fine. I, I'm still getting quite a few Palantirs, and if my opponent ever gets revealed, then it's going to be great. I'm just going to unload all these uh, nasty character cards on them. Um, but I only rolled one eye. And then my opponent gets three movement. So this is a situation where they're at, they're at six movement. They could potentially make it to Mordor this round. And if that happens, I will not be happy as Shadow because I definitely want to play Foul Thing and Isildur's Bane. Anything that's drawing a tile, I want to draw that before these red tiles get in. And in case I hit an eye, I want to be able to put the eye back in the pool. So I'm hoping even with this one eye, if they move four times, I'll be able to reveal them. So they start by playing Spirit of Mordor. You know, that's okay. I... I just, the expected damage there is one or two, um, I guess two, five thirds. And so I guess so. I guess you do that much and then this army really is going to need to be reinforced. But quite honestly, I'm planning on, I mean, I, I, mean, I think Shadow is going to have to reinforce that anyway. So I don't know. This is okay, but I might, I might prefer to wait. All right. Anyway, they get one hit. And I get rid of a um, regular unit, even though that puts me down to only four combat strength, because I know that I'm going to reinforce. And I didn't, ro I didn't get enough army movement. What I really want is more army movement, so these guys can do army moves in. But um, I didn't, and so I'm going to have to reposition Nazgul to get to get these armies reinforced. And I really, I. I don't know. My my military is going so slowly here, but I, it's not obvious to me where else I should be attacking. If anybody has thoughts, um, like where as Shadow with a turn like this, where where would you go? What what would you attack? You have one muster. You have a handful of character cards, and I guess this is a little bit of the drawback of my character card strategy because if I had strategy cards right here, I could be I could be playing them. I I could be doing potentially useful things with them. Um, I do have Fighting Urukai, so I'm going to be able to make an attack up here. But otherwise, I just I don't have that many useful things. So I'm just hoping that my opponent's going to get revealed. All right, I muster a unit down here, thinking I'm going to reinforce, and maybe I can move on and whittle down Woodland Realm. Uh, I get these armies ready. I leave one behind just in case. I'm thinking, you know, there are some military opportunities here. If, shadow, if uh, free people decide to move, they attack out of here. You know, I don't think they could capture both this round, but I actually don't have any musters left. I'm spending my last muster. So if they decide to go on sort of an attacking rampage, I'm going to have to use this army to attack back into Moria. I have to be a little careful. So that's what, anyway, I, I left one behind. All right, so... And then I move this army here. They go ahead and pass. I move Nazgul around because I need, I didn't get army movement. So I actually have to have Nazgul here to move this army in. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move Nazgul and then I'm going to get them to Erebor and then I'm going to be able to play um, Fighting Urukai. Okay, so I end up putting the Witch King over uh, in Dimmerdale thinking that um, I'm more likely to attack Lorien before Erebor at this point because the Celeborn's Galadrim card is still available and I'd rather take out Lorien sooner rather than later. And um, a, a Power Too Great is also out there. So I'd rather take out Lorien before, before the Power Too Great happens. At the same time, I don't want to be too aggressive in getting the Elves to war because I don't want my opponent to have four, four, four attacking dice with Elves this round if they decide to go for, for a military attack. So I'm sort of trying to slow play it a little bit. Yes, I'm going to attack Lorien, but I don't want to give them a free muster while my dice pool looks like this and I don't have any musters and dull golders completely open. So... All right, so I'm going to move these armies in, and I think that's going to be an okay okay result. So I, I move those in, and now um, they start moving the Fellowship, and I miss. That was on a six. And here I move into Erebor. And um, this was actually 
potentially a mistake. I, I don't know what I could have done differently given, given the dice rolls that I had. But the problem with this ordering is that I had this army parked outside of Lorien so that if my opponent ever musters the elves towards war, just in a normal way, not with power too great, but just normally, then I could immediately attack into Lorien. But because I just used my last attack to get into Erebor, they can use this muster to just get the elves to war and then use this Will of the West to put an extra elf in Lorien. And they do still have a decent elven force pool. So, um, you know, this I think this was a bit of a misplay on my part, but I, I don't know what I could have done differently. I would have had to sort of waste one of these Palantir dice, or maybe, maybe I just hope that my opponent is going to keep, you know, keep going, or they're going to think, oh, he probably has Ring Wraiths are abroad. But quite honestly, if I had Ring Wraiths are abroad, I would have played it instead of using the character die to, to move Nazgul around. I would have played it to move Nazgul around and also get a movement. So I, I'm pretty vulnerable here, but I, I guess my thinking is, well, that is what it is. I'm, I just, <laughs> this game will be me besieging strongholds with five units in it. So that's why I played it that way. But as it turns out, my opponent uh, just kept moving. I miss again. That was on a five or a six. And at this point, I think my opponent is thinking, Ooh, I could make it into, I could make it into Mordor. Right. And, um, I go ahead and play the fighting orc high because what else can I do? Literally none of my other cards are playable because my opponent still hasn't been revealed yet. And this battle, I don't, we don't play any cards and they do manage to dish out a, a good amount of damage onto this army four hits. And, um, I do, I do win it, but again, military is going super slowly. I'm going to have trouble figuring out like, where, where are my other victory points? It's, it's just, it's just tough. And so I think at this point as the fellowship player, yes, it's great to only move against one eye, but I don't know, things are going so well and, and militarily you're doing such a good job defending. If you use these as two musters, you could get Lorien with a, like with a full contingent against this army right here with the elves at war. So I might think about that, but yeah. And, and the other thing is with dead men of Dunharrow, I would be thinking about trying to get maybe Strider as got, or as Aragorn here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just keep Strider in move slowly. That's fine. But in any case they move. Uh, a ninth time and I miss again. So that was a four, five or six. So at this point I've really missed a lot. I know that if my opponent uses a ring, they're going to make it to Mordor this round. I, there's nothing I can do to stop them. And I think they will. And so again, what the heck can I do here? I have literally no playable cards because my opponent has never been revealed this whole game. And what can I do? So um, I decide to draw another character card. Because that's that's been my whole strategy this game. I'm thinking maybe they'll get revealed and then I'll get to draw some extra tiles and I'll get to play some of these cards like Isildur's Bane or Foul Thing before they get into Mordor. So in case I draw an eye, they won't be able to do it. All right. So I drew I drew Warner Saur on Toil. You know, a red tile also would have been fine there. Um, okay. So again, they use a ring and they're making it into Mordor. And this time I hit them, but I don't reveal them. So yeah, that's just, that's just, um, bad news for, for shadow and good news for free people. They're going to be able to declare straight from, from Rivendell into minus Morgul, um, or Mornon, either one, same distance. And there's nothing I can do about it. And in particular, um, even if I had cruel weather here, the benefit of staying in Rivendell this whole time is that there's no place I could move the fellowship that would actually make them any farther away. So that is the benefit of uh, the nature of the geography in Rivendell, in Lorien, or in Minas Tirith. Any of those places, if the fellowship is there, you're immune effectively to cruel weather because there's no place to move you farther away from any of those strongholds. 
All right, but it doesn't even matter. I don't have cruel weather. Um, that's just how it goes. So they they take two and lose axe and bow. And I really don't understand that. Um, I have Athalas in hand. I want to be at three corruption so that if I hit on all of my Athalas rolls, um, then I can heal three. And furthermore, on top of all of that, Axe and bow, yes, it heals you one, but what it really does is two other things. It's not really just one corruption. It's um, sometimes more than that because let's say the I draw one and there are four ones in the pool or even an eye where there's only one eye. All right. If I'm, if I'm taking exactly one corruption, then as the free people player, I'm sort of in a tough choice. Do I want to take a random companion and maybe risk losing Strider or Bormir Gimli? Um, or, um, do I want to just take one corruption and then my corruption is, um, inching up with ax and bow, you just don't take any corruption. And you don't have to lose a random companion and you just use your companions more efficiently. Um, And that is particularly an issue with the card Foul Thing from the Deep. And and that's relevant because Foul Thing from the Deep says they have to take a random, they have to take a random companion. But the rules are if you have Axe and Bow, you can reduce the corruption first with axe and bow and then take a random companion if you have to. But what that means is all of these one tiles in the pool become zeros against foul thing from the deep. And then you end up not taking a random companion at all. And the, and, and the opposite, the flip side of that is if you do get a one, you have to take a random companion and maybe you're going to hit Gimli or Boromir and then you're, the shadow is getting two for one or you're going to hit Strider and you're getting three for one. So Axe and Bow in general on its surface, I think one card for one corruption is like, okay, but not that great. What it's really doing for you is protecting you against foul thing, a one draw on a foul thing or one draw when moving up um, Mordor or other times. Okay. So I I think that was a mistake. Probably better to probably better to just take three, but maybe there are other things I'm considering. I'm not considering like if they wanted to take a random companion and, and then accidentally hit Gimli, then, you know, obviously it's better to have already used Axe and Bow. All right. So I play Warren with Sorrow and Toil because that's literally my only playable card. I never revealed them. They got to go straight from Rivendell to Minus Morgul. My whole strategy of getting a bunch of character cards, you know, I'm pretty nervous about. Hopefully, you know, when they reveal uh, declare to the mortar track, then I can play Isildur's Bane. I can play Foul Thing. I can I can play all of these nasty cards once once they get in. But then it has the risk of drawing an eye. But I'm just going to have to take that risk given where things are. All right. Warren with Iron Toil is in play. Next round, they make it to Mordor and I get Orc Patrol. So I have all three tile drawing cards. I always prefer to play them before Mordor. So if you hit an eye, you don't. Um... You don't actually remove the eye, but that I did not have that luxury. So I literally have six character cards in my hand and um, I allocate, I think about it and I decide to allocate two eyes. I'd love, I'd love to hear your opinions. How many eyes would you allocate in this situation? They, they're just making it to Mordor. They have eight points of corruption, um, soaking ability in the fellowship and they're at two corruption. So they're effectively at negative six corruption. The fellowship is, if they use these guys efficiently, they're at negative six corruption. How many eyes do you allocate hoping that you hit an eye? You do have five eye tiles in there because there is this, uh, the ring is mine. So the chances of actually pulling an eye are a bit higher. Um, I decide to go with two hedging my bets a little bit because I'm still honestly a little worried about military. Like there, there are things that um, the free people could do. It doesn't seem like they're thinking about that, but it is a possibility. So I don't want to over allocate like five eyes or something like that and then roll more. I'm thinking if I, if I allocate two, I'm probably going to roll, you know, on average about a little more than one more. I'd be happy with three eyes in there and then they would move with three and move with four. That's, that's going to dish out a decent amount of corruption. All right. So I allocate two and then roll zero and my whole plan of, okay, finally, I'm going to get to play all of my character cards. I rolled zero Palantirs at zero character dice. 
Ah, so, you know, <laughs> this is this is not the sort of role that I wanted to see with this hand. I think I think this is the funniest, sort of the funniest, most ironic role. Um, you know, at least these musters, I'm going to get to muster the mouth of Sauron and I'm going to get to make an attack. But, you know, my military is just it's it's going nowhere, nowhere fast. Um, all right. So they they move and uh, first move is getting revealed. Finally, they get revealed. And how am I going to take advantage of it? They take one corruption. And, you know, I think I think that makes sense. You don't want to, you certainly don't want to lose Athelas to Warren of Sauron Toil. So fine, they get revealed. And then I use a muster, because that's an extra die, to um, play. I use the, the only ring that I have to play Morgul Wound. And this is a really interesting moment. I would, I would love this is, if there's one thing to comment on, this is the thing to comment on. Would you play Morgul Wound? because they're revealed and they're at three corruption. So you're going to get to do two corruption or would you play breaking of the fellowship potentially, potentially getting, you know, a three or even Shelob and, and potentially doing quite a lot of damage. My thinking was I have worn with sorrow and toil in play. I would rather not forcefully separate companions. I would feel pretty bad if I pulled either of the red tiles or even an eye at this point. And otherwise, like this one does one corruption. This two does three corruption. This three does five corruption. But, you know, my chances of rolling a three or getting a three are just too low. So it just, it doesn't feel like that useful. So... Instead, I just take the two corruption guaranteed and I'm thinking I can either play the breaking of fellowship later or um, I can save it until Gollum is guide and have it do one corruption guaranteed. All right. So that was my thinking. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Would you have played Morgul Wound there? Or would, you, would you have played breaking of the fellowship there with your single character uh, character card that you could play this round? All right. So um, I muster the mouth and my opponent knows I can't do anything. I can't do anything with the fellowship right now because uh, I don't have any Palantirs. I don't have any character dice and I've used a ring. So there's just nothing I can do to mess with the fellowship. So they're properly passing. I think that's exactly right. And um, I go ahead and attack Dale. I don't know. I guess I'm thinking eventually I'm going to um, try and take Woodland Realm. Maybe I I'm just like, I don't even know what my plan is militarily here. Um, I guess eventually I can get the Mouth of Sauron up to Woodland Realm. I have this Isengard unit up here so I can have three leadership in this battle. Um, maybe eventually take out Woodland Realm and Lorien. So that's five. And then Dol, uh, Dol Amroth maybe is... Anyway, this is five, this is two more, this is two more, and then maybe Pilar Gear, or I don't know, maybe the Shire. But I'm like so far off, so far away from any sort of military thing. Um, I'm not even necessarily thinking that clearly. So um, I attack Dale and I roll a six, but they get a hit, and now I have this. And I'm starting to worry a little about, you know, this army coming out. So I'm going to muster, I'm going to muster up a bit here. They hide the fellowship with Strider's ability. So Strider is doing some good work here and I muster again and now Athelas. So that's, you know, it's just so pleasant. You're turn seven, you know, first step of Mordor and you're still have Strider as guide to get to play Athelas. It's just, it's just great. Now they have had that in their hand for a long time and they saved it, obviously great time to save it. Um, but maybe it would have made sense to have taken more corruption sooner and then played it sooner. I, I don't know, but now is a perfectly good time to play it. And they hit for all three, right? You expect it to heal two, but they actually heal for three. So, you know, as at this point, I'm just, oh my gosh, the, the fellowship is again at negative six corruption and they're only, you know, four steps away. So it's, it's going to be a pretty tough climb, a pretty tough road for, for me to stop them. My whole strategy was play a bunch of character cards on them, never revealed them. And then the first turn they were in Mordor didn't roll any character dice. So sometimes, sometimes that's just how, how it goes. All right. So they move again. That makes sense. And this time they, um, hit an eye. So, you know, maybe I should have had more eyes in there. 
I don't know. They take three damage. Now, I think it makes sense to, to lose a random here. Um, because if you can keep Strider, then you're going to be able to use this to hide. Um, so, and, and corruption is just not an issue. So I think that's right. And do I have any, I don't have any particularly exciting character cards in my hand. So I already played Othalos in advance. So good. All right. We get, we get Mary. Now the one slightly bad thing about drawing Mary for free people is that it does trigger worn with sorrow and toil because they were taken as a random casualty. So they, they're taken and then they still survive. Of course, we're on the mortar track, so they do end up getting eliminated. But if this had happened outside of Mordor, then um, you would get to draw, you'd get to lose a random card from worn with sorrow and toil, but also Mary would live and be on the board somewhere. Since we're on the mortar track, Mary just goes away. But this does trigger worn with sorrow and toil. I'm actually going to get four triggers out of worn with sorrow and toil at this point. Okay, so um, the fellowship is revealed, and I wish, I wish that I had another character card uh, result, any character result, um, because then I could play Breaking of the Fellowship now, and now that there's no Hobbit in there, these do a bunch of damage, right? Because this one does, they have to separate one companion, it will do two corruption damage. A two will do four corruption damage, because if I draw this two, the, the most effective way you could separate companions is... Um, Boromir and Gimli. And if I happen to draw the three or get Shelob and roll high enough, then I could actually do seven corruption damage with a three. So, ah, I'm so aggravated. I can't believe it. And I didn't get Strider. So, he, you know, my opponent, they're going to get to hide with this, with this last action die. So, all right. Uh, sometimes the dice don't go your way. All right. I go ahead and put Lorien under siege. Might as well make some progress and be prepared to cycle character cards if I, if I need to. And um, my opponent hides. That's certainly correct. And I attack Lorien once. So here's a question. Do you cycle any of these cards? Right? So do I play Dread and Despair? I, I think I want to save the tile drawing cards because they're going to slow down the fellowship. It's going to inflict corruption. Maybe I'll get lucky and, and flip over these, you know, reveal cards, reveal tiles. What about Breaking of the Fellowship? So to me, bringing the fellowship is really tasty to keep because if, for instance, uh, either of these zeros get revealed, then um, I can play breaking and do a bunch of damage or I can just save it for Gollum and do one. So I decide, I decide, you know what? All of these cards, even though I'm attacking Lorien, all of these cards are worth saving. I think that I'm going to get to play all of them. I don't know if that's right or not. It was certainly a hard choice to hold on to it, but I decided to hold on to it. I, I hate not playing a card when the Witch King is in battle, but I just I thought that I could actually play all of these cards for their for their card effects. All right, so Shield Wall happens, and um, I do some good damage. I rolled some sixes, and you know, uh, I press once, but that's it, and Lorian survives. All right, so. Dreadful Spells, and Corsairs of Umbar. So I, I just committed to keeping Orc Patrol, Foul Thing, Isildur's Bane, Candles of Corpses, and Breaking the Fellowship. So I, I think I'm going to hold on to those. So between Dreadful Spells and Corsairs of Umbar, you know, maybe militarily someday I'd like to win. So I'm keeping I'm keeping Corsairs um, because it's just a really powerful effect. Gondor isn't at war yet. It'd be great to get them under siege. All right, so... Um, I discard Dreadful Spells, and even though it is a useful combat card too, but uh, Deadly Strife. If I'm playing a combat effect, Deadly Strife is a better combat effect. All right, I allocate two eyes again. It worked reasonably well last time. I don't know. Maybe I should have allocated more to do even more damage. There are fewer eyes in the pool now. There are only four eyes instead of five. So, all right. That's, I, I pick two, and I roll one more. So there are three eyes in there. And my opponent gets... You know, perfectly nice roll, plenty of flexibility, can just move right along. So they move and get an eye. So, you know, I, I, I would have liked to do more damage there, but so maybe it was wrong to have only allocated two, but, you know, three three corruption and revealing is, is still good. So 
they take a random companion. They still keep Strider, which is good because that way they can keep hiding with, with other... They don't have to use character results to hide. And they go up to five corruption. So, you know, at this point, uh, I could play Breaking of the Fellowship. And the benefit of that is if I get a one, it does two. And if I get a two or a three, it does five. So, you know, maybe, maybe that's the right play. Um, and in fact, I think it probably is the right play. I am still thinking about Worn with Sorrow and Toil. So I don't want to sort of force them to separate. It doesn't, it won't trigger Worn with Sorrow and Toil. Um, but I'm also thinking about Candles of Corpses. So if I get what, what I'm hoping for with Breaking of the Fellowship, which is a high tile, then I actually make my other card, Candles of Corpses, worse. So, um, because once Gollum is guide, Candles of Corpses is much, is much worse. So again, this would be a great moment. Would you play Candles of Corpses to do one and a half corruption damage? Or would you play Breaking of the Fellowship to, um, to be able to try and separate some, some companions? I mean, the other, the other benefit of, um, of breaking is that if I get a two or a three, then Strider is gone. And now they're going to have to use a character die to hide, but they're going so slowly. Uh, my military is going so slowly. The buying extra time, I think doesn't necessarily help. And I guess what I'm thinking here is, um, breaking a fellowship could potentially whiff. I, I really don't want to, accidentally pull one of these red tiles and I could potentially get extra corruption damage. For instance, if, if, if they, if I pull a one at some point, there's still three ones in here. If I pull a one or even a two and they lose strider, I'm still getting sort of that extra value that I would be getting out of breaking. Um, and on top of that, they would lose from worn with sorrow and toil anyway. So, that was my thinking um, to play Candles of Corpses. I really don't, I still don't know if it was right, but I played Candles of Corpses, average is 1.5 and I got two. So now my opponent is up to seven. I've definitely made some progress and my plan is wait for them to hide and then play or patrol or foul thing or Isildur's Bane and, and try and reveal them that way and slow them down. So they hide and then I play foul thing because I'm hoping to get you know, one of these ones or any of these reveals so that I'm just, I'm just slowing them down. Now, obviously I don't want to, I really don't want to pull an eye. I really don't want to pull a red tile, but I think I have to try because otherwise they're just going to keep marching along. So this is me unloading my hand of a bunch of character cards that I've been saving for the whole game. My whole strategy was play, draw and play a bunch of character cards. And now it's happening. It would have been nice if it happened last round, but it's happening now. All right, foul thing, and I draw one. So this is this is the axe and bow moment. This is the horn of Gondor moment. When a one is drawn, and now I'm going to get either two corruption for it or three corruption for it, when instead, if I still had, if Fellowship still had axe and bow, they would just uh, cancel it, done. And I really love the theme of that. You know, it's just, okay, anyway, I the one is drawn, and, and then I get Strider. And, you know, yes, that's bad luck for getting Strider. Um, but on the other hand, Strider made it to second to last. You know, there were plenty of random companions that had been drawn before that and Strider served his job well. Um, so, you know, overall, yeah, sure. That was a bad moment, but the overall luck on Strider, I think was, was above average for, for free peoples to make it to the second to last with, with Strider. Okay. So, um, you know, this is starting to look like maybe a, maybe a game. Um, maybe I can do, um, seven corruption <laughs> before they move twice. Um, you know, it would have been really nice. I would have loved for that to be a one reveal would have been the really perfect tile. Um, but so, okay. So they move and they get a zero. So, you know, that's disappointing. I wish that it had done more damage an eye there, a red tile, um, given the size of the pool when we started in Mordor, 
and the fact that I had two red tiles in there over the course of the run up Mordor, I calculated it. It was something like a little better than 50% chance that we pull a red tile sometime in Mordor. Um, you know, obviously each step we go without pulling a red tile, the chances of getting a red tile at some point go down because the fellowship's making progress. And at this point there's only, um, 11 tiles in there and only two reds. So, you know, not, not good. All right. So here are my cards. I have Isildur's Bane. I have Orc Patrol. Um, you know, I'm thinking about playing Breaking the Fellowship now, but that could end up wasting, wasting some corruption um and i and, and possibly a reveal so my thinking is probably the fellowship's gonna hide with with this will of the west and then i can play isildur's bane or orc patrol to try and reveal them so that's my that's my thinking and Oh, right, right, right. Sorry. The, yeah. So they're going to hide. And then if I manage to reveal them, then I can stop them from winning this round and we can go to the next round. All right. So um, they hide, which makes sense. And now I play my um, play my card and I play Isildur's because I don't want them to be able to lose Gimli. Um I don't know that it really matters much, but if I happen to get Shelob and I happen to roll a five or a six, then I actually win the game. <laughs> I just I just win the game uh, outright if if that happens. So very low, very low probability of that happening. But, you know, if you have a chance to win the game and I'm picking between, um, I'm clearly going to play either Orc Patrol or Isildur's Bane because what I really want is to reveal them. I mean, sure, getting Shelob and rolling a six would be perfect. But, um, you know, my, my more reasonable goal is, you know, drawing any one of these three reveal tiles so that they won't be able to um, immediately win. All right, but I draw three. So the significance of getting that three is now an I... Um, an eye tile actually wins me the game because they're, they, they got up to 10 corruption. They can lose Gimli. Um, but these eyes, uh, these two regular eyes now win for me because they would do five damage. So at this point, I think it makes sense for the free people to wait around and, um, see how many eyes I roll and, 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 and then right all the better. Now, if I had rolled more character dice earlier, I would also still be able to play orc patrol and breaking of the fellowship, right? All of these things. So, um, well, potentially breaking the fellowship if they get revealed and don't hide. Um, but I just didn't, I just didn't have a chance to play the character dice because the character cards, because the fellowship was hidden the whole way to Mordor. And so I think that's one really interesting argument. If you see your opponent drawing a bunch of character cards, maybe it makes sense to not declare out of Rivendell, even if you're going to avoid the extra tile from, from Moria. So, all right. Um, all right. So what am I doing? I guess I'm just like getting some armies ready. If I had a character card to cycle, I would have cycled it with the Witch King, but I want to potentially play Orc Patrol and Breaking of the Fellowship. My plan for potentially, maybe possibly winning the game is my opponent has to draw a red tile and then um, I can like play Breaking of the Fellowship if they get revealed or Orc Patrol if not. So I want to save, I want to save both of these. I'm not going to, not going to play them. All right, so what can the Fellowship do? It makes sense to wait. So they wait, and then I use the mouth to get this army ready. So now, finally, I'm ready to take Woodland Realm. I don't know. Maybe I'd take it eventually with a whole bunch of dice, but um, odds odds are not good on that battle. And anyway, the game is going to be decided. All right, so my opponent draws Mithril Coat and Sting, and that's, and that's really interesting. I didn't draw any worse character card than what I already had in hand. I drew Balrog. Um... But, and, and my opponent, I, I can only allocate one eye. I didn't roll enough. So now all of the eyes are, are safe. All of the regular eyes are safe for the fellowship. Um, and, and they roll enough. So the question is, as free people, at this point, do you play Mithril Coat and Sting? Or do you just try and move outright? And obviously Mithril Coat and Sting is very good. 
Um, but the problem is if I have like orc patrol, um, or if I have lidless eye, I can put more eyes in, um, then he, then he risks, sorry, they risk getting hit by something like a one or a two reveal. And at that point, if they're, they, they will have to lose Gimli and then I can get rid of I can get rid of um, Mithril Coat and Sting anyway because of Worn with Sorrow and Toil. So even though this was a pretty late play of Worn with Sorrow and Toil, the Fellowship had actually been doing pretty well. And therefore, I, I think it makes sense to not bother playing Mithril Coat and Sting in case you have um, Orc Patrol because Orc Patrol could, could dish out some damage. And right now, the, the Fellowship has 80% chance of winning. Right, there are only two red tiles. Everything else is totally fine. So, I, you know, if it were me, I would just move. So they end up, um, they end up just moving, and um, I get a red tile. So obviously, this is this is really quite devastating for the free people. They had made it so far up up Mordor track, um, only to get stopped at the very end by the ring is mine. And if I had had one more eye, if I'd happened to roll one more eye, then this would actually be uh, deadly because I saved all along, I saved the breaking of the fellowship. So what's going to happen is uh, they get stopped. Gimli goes away. We get worn with sorrow and toil. And, um, and then I play breaking to get them to 11. So if I had done one more damage at any point, um, they would be done right now, but that's how it goes. So this is this is tricky. Um, you know, did it make sense to save it as long as I did? You know, I, I guess maybe it worked out. Um, and then, of course, they hide. And now, um, you know, my whole plan in this game was play a bunch of character cards. And I eventually, eventually managed to do it. The hunt pool looks like this now. Um, the, the two does not win. So the, now there are many fewer tiles that win um, for the free people, but they probably have t a little more time because I missed Mithril Coat and Sting. They can wait. They can play Mithril Coat and Sting, and then next round they can make their move. Um, particularly, they might they might draw another blue tile. They might draw some healing. Um, but I go ahead and play. Um, I go ahead and play Orc Patrol right now because. You know, I think it's worth a shot. Um, obviously, I don't want to. I don't want to draw either of the eyes. Um, you know, the one they could reveal Gollum, um, so that wouldn't. You know, that wouldn't really hurt them. Um, a two, though, either either of these twos or Shelob will win the game. Uh, well, Shelob, assuming I roll higher than a one, so. You know, there are only nine tiles left, and I and three of them win me the game immediately. So I think if you have a one-third chance of winning the game, um, you know, take it. Because maybe there's Bilbo's song, right? Maybe there's who knows what. Uh, there's another way. That could be possible. So, all right. So I play Orc Patrol and draw two. Um, and that corrupts the Fellowship. So they, they were so close. They were so close to making it. They were looking so good so far. They made it straight from Rivendell to Minus Morgul. Um but it turned out still able to, I was still able to corrupt them. So, you know, some things did go my way, um, certainly in, in Mordor, but also some things didn't go my way in terms of the, you know, the character dice that I could have, that I could have rolled. Um, so I thought, I thought this was a really interesting game. Let's look at the, let's look at the statistics. Um, you can see right? Like my eyes, uh, turned out to be, um, lower, but earlier in the game, this was, this was much higher when I uh, had rolled more pretty high on Palantirs. Um, you know, would have been more useful later game than when I had them sort of mid game. Um, combat was, you know, pretty standard, nothing special there. So, you know, this was, this was, I wouldn't say too much luck with the action dice. There were certainly some rounds where I had had it in clumps and it was, and it was tough, but overall, um, you know, I had a plan for trying to corrupt the fellowship and, 
um, it ended up working out. Now, I don't know, you know, in the end, I only had an 80, uh, 20% chance of stopping them and got lucky with that last roll. But if you look at the overall game, you know, before, before we got to that particular point in the game, um, it, maybe it was more balanced than that. Um, I don't know. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for listening. Let me know if you have any suggestions and uh, have a good rest of the day.